Hello and welcome back to another new edition of Windows of Current Affairs and today we continue our comprehensive and thorough look over the uh, latest IMF loan. Of course the first tranche uh, 2.75 US dollar have been approved by the board of the IMF and in order to approve uh, the first uh, tranche and uh, uh, all over of the loan, the 12 billion US dollar, of course we're going to receive the 2.75 as a first tranche. In order to be able to approve the loan and the first tra tranche, uh, Egypt is supposed to fulfill uh, certain prerequisites uh, known as the economic reforms, uh, steps taken by the Egyptian government, lifting subsidies, uh, liberating the Egyptian pound or floating the Egyptian pound to the US dollar, and uh, um, there is a lifting of uh, uh, subsidies over the fuel and energy uh, and other commodities. Of course, uh, painful, serious, a series of painful steps to uh, the citizens. It is required, it has been delayed, but it is supposed to be taken as a remedy for the Egyptian economy. Some would say that this IMF loan is going to inject more money into the Egyptian market and thus in return is going to reflect a lot of confidence, self-confidence in the, uh, the, the, in the investment climate inside Egypt and attract foreign investment and invest new confidence into the uh, Egyptian economy in front of the whole world of course, there is a debate between this and that. We're going to be exploring all the facts on the table. And we're very delighted to have with us Dr. Salah Abdullah, a former member of parliament and an economic analyst. Uh, good evening, Dr. Abdullah. Good evening. Um, let's talk about the first tranche uh, that uh, is uh, 2.7 billion, of which the IMF executive board have already approved. Of course, uh, to be able to approve that tranche, Egypt have already taken the steps already, uh, the prerequisites on which this tranche is supposed to be uh, given to Egypt or arrive to Egypt and effected in some projects, but on the condition that Egypt is not supposed to use that money on national projects because national projects uh, consume liquidity of money. Uh, if you'd like to elaborate on this, please. Uh, this loan has two positive mm. signs and one major negative sign. Mm. The two positive signs, number one, uh, it gives a certificate that the uh, Egyptian economy is safe. And this, of course, reflect itself on foreign countries and companies who want to invest in Egypt. The second, it increases the hard currency in the bank and this strengthens the local currency. But it has a negative result, which is to have this loan, you, have, you make many measures, you say it now, like freeing the uh, uh, local uh, currency yeah, in front pounds. of the dollars. And this, of course, uh, uh, decreased the power of the Egyptian pounds. And this will reflect itself on the prices. That's why the prices is increasing hardly now in Egypt. The problem of uh, this kind of funds, not in Egypt alone, in all the world, that when the prices become very high, the people suffering too much. Right. If you can allow me, uh, Dr. Abdullah, we have with us Dr. Hussein Shariba, an economist and a financial expert. Uh, good evening, Dr. Shariba. Good evening, ma'am. Uh, we were talking about the IMF loan and the first uh, tranche, 2.7 billion US dollar arriving to Egypt or has been approved by the board of the IMF on uh, the condition of approving or uh, fulfilling some prerequisites. Some economists uh, were debated that they have fears that uh, there are uh, repercussions for this, uh, uh, the lifting of subsidies, the uh, freeing the Egyptian pound uh, against the US dollar and lifting the subsidies over the energy and fuel commodities and all that. Uh, this is going to affect some uh, chaos inside the market that could not be able to be controlled by the government. And the first one, or the most one, who's going to be suffering is the Egyptian citizen. How would you read that? Well, uh, what they have said is correct if you don't have a correct government, but we do have a correct government. Mm. So what they have said, it's, it's not in Egypt. 
because we do have a control on on our pound, on our um, uh, uh, commodities, and our values over there. So when you go and say, I'm going to have a loan, uh, this loan is for a certain period, and it's for a certain uh, item, and it's for a purpose. It's mm. not going to go and fulfill um, the fantasy of uh, our life. It will fulfill the necessity of uh, part of our life. It's not all of our life because you have also, uh, we have used uh, the people and, uh, support in, in, in this matter and you could find that almost like uh, between 60 to 70 billion Egyptian pounds was being calculated and gathered by the, from the market for uh, uh, some um, uh, certificates, bank certificates has been done. This is, shows you that people have the confidence with their government. They have the co uh, uh, with the, the, the ruling uh, uh, today. So why should we be worried about 2.7 billion mm -hmm. U.S. dollars, which is coming right now, from the International Bank, when the International Bank is approving us, is approving that we are capable to give back the money, and we are part of the International Bank. So uh, they are not giving us from their own pocket, and we are not going to take this money and run away. We are going, we are, as any other uh, countries, we have got money, and then we'll use it in a certain thing, which the government has already assigned it for it, and we are ready for this. Uh, let's stop the negative part of our uh, way of saying uh, things like this. Because if you don't act and you don't do, and you, what you have done and what you have acted is very well studied and very well accurate manner. So why should you uh, listen to someone who is really afraid of himself himself? Right, no, Dr. Shireba, people debate it's not the loan that people are afraid of or economists are afraid of. It's the prerequisites or the conditions that are set for this loan that people are a little bit uh, reluctant to be able to accept, which is more than one thing at one time. Will the layman in the street be able to absorb all that with his very limited salary and his very limited or declining to half uh, his uh, savings and his own salary, almost 50% less. This is the uh, concern of the Egyptian street. Also, people are uh, talking about the cutbacks in the subsidies that is going to affect in, uh, the hiking of prices, the reform of the cur currency that is going also to affect uh, some little setbacks in the market. These are the things that Egyptians are fearing, not the loan itself. Well, this is one of the uh, opinions. Let's, let's agree on one thing. Mm. Nothing will, will make the price go down unless I have a very high quality of work done in Egypt. Mm. And this has have to be done not by the government, it's by everyone in Egypt. Right. So, so when you say something, we have to, anyone who should be, uh, be afraid. If you want to, if you want to not to be afraid, absolutely work hard, do your job, do your assignment very correct. Then wait for the results. The results are positive, is not negative. Because when you do your job, if you are a farmer, you farm your land in the right manner, the right way with uh, the right way of irrigation. If you are an employee in in working in. in in, 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 in steel factory or anything like this, you have to make that your uh, steel product is the top on the line. Mm. It's not any steel. If you want to say that I am uh, a teacher, you should educate the kids very well to make a very good candidates for the future. So mm. it's, everybody is, is, is doing so you, you, you could be worried from today until the end of the world because if you are not doing your job, that's very simple as this. Because mm. the government, when they do a loan, they do a loan just to support 
some certain things and to help everything go refresh back again and go whenever there is a um, economy chaos sometimes you have to not to not only to close down um, your um, your your factories or anything like this you should start uh, improving your quality go for a better one and open more than one uh, one stage it's, don't close it open another one it's like uh, president cc and they have assigned some people to go for the 1500 factories which is for textile which is closed and they mm. have created a new company to support them for their needs mm. this is this is the this is the right and target manner don't don't look negative you have to let positive and uh, when you're always afraid, this is afraid is not a bad sign, but it's a good sign if you start working. If you don't work, you don't, and you think you are afraid, and you, okay, be afraid because you don't work, but you have right. to work. Right. Dr. Hassan Shariba, the economist and financial expert, would like to thank you very much, sir, uh, for your time. And going back to you, Dr. Abdullah. Uh, that's how uh, Dr. Shariba uh, would uh, comfort the worries and the woes of the uh, uh, Egyptian street. How do you see it on the other side? I don't agree with what Dr. Shariba said, in fact, because people are not worried from the loan. Mm. People are worried from the measurement, which is the exactly, government. Exactly, that was they, what I was saying. Unless the government... An efficiency of the government... understand we, that they have to do some measures to let the people being uh, uh, satisfied and they can tolerate what is happening. With credibility. And this will be, number one, increasing the social justice. You can't let in the society very, very rich people and in the same time you have people doesn't find, uh, you know, in, in a very poor condition. Number two, the salaries will not be enough with this increase in the prices. The prices increased double and the treble. Okay? Even, even look to the sugar, how much the price now, other things now. So, unless there will be a measurement to increase the income of the people. This is, people who in pension, million in pension, the, their mm. own income is very low and they are in very bad condition. This is number three. Number four, you have to increase the taxes on the high income to allow the government to have Captain enough Hintz. money to pay for the poor. The, the social measurement is very important. Not, you are not working, you have to work. Okay, they have to work, but they have to eat. They have to live. They have to pay the, 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 uh, the rent for the houses. They have to pay money for the children in the schools. We have to look to the life of the people, not just to give them address that they have to work, and because they didn't uh, work, we didn't have enough production. Mm. We know all this, mm. but now the, the Egyptian pound had been dropped from dollar for six up to dollar for eight, up to dollar for 15, sometimes reached 16. Okay, the reflection of this on the internal market on the people, on the poor, what the government will do. According to the measurements will government will do, I can say that the matter will be succeeded or failed. We will pass this era safely. So or it's based on the trouble. efficiency of the government. Efficiency but let me, government. let me ask you a question here. When people are accusing, I mean, certain um, people are in the government or officials are accusing the Egyptian street or the Egyptian citizens, the below the poor sector and the middle class, you do not wake up and you do not stand up on your feet and you work, don't work hard enough to be able to effect production and all that uh, uh, mumble. Uh, well, they all know for sure that there is a ceiling on salaries in the governmental uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, sectors. No matter how long of hours you work, you still have a fixed salary. So even if they keep working 24 seven, they will still have a ceiling on their salary. Yes, so why are they urging them on the wrong yes. direction? 
This you is didn't one thing. encourage them by a system. You have to, to, to put a new mm. system Incentive. to encourage people mm. to work more. If you work more, you can gain more. Okay? Mm. But this doesn't happen even in the government sector or the private sector. Or you, otherwise it's going to be slavery. Th this is the question. Right. And second thing, you have a new measures, a new projects to, to, to let the people have more work. Where is the new project we have? Where is the new project? The whole country the one, is full of projects. One We're and doing half nothing but, but projects right is now. It's still, still in the preparation time. There is the new very, capital. It's very good. The new capital of, okay, at least 50,000 are working there. This mm. is good. You need many, many And there is also projects. Sinai. President Sisi, to be honest with you, was the first Egyptian uh, president to, who succeeded in really, uh, honestly, uh, linking the Sinai Peninsula with the rest of Egypt and the rest of the Arab world. And this particular act, a very courageous act, have uh, effected in uh, laying foundation for uh, whatever you can think of uh, developing projects on that particular uh, huge area, which is uh, very fertile for many developing projects and uh, uh, developmental uh, ideas, uh, universities, uh, companies, uh, tourism, investment, what, all kinds of investment. So um, this could be one incentive also. What you say, all is true. But where is the role of our rich Egyptian people in making new projects in Sinai to accept more labor hand. Give me the name of one or two projects our rich people doing in Sinai now. During King Salman's first, uh, uh, visit to, to Egypt earlier this year, there were many agreements signed for uh, Saudi we, projects we in Sinai. Many agreement even in the conference, economic conference in mm. Sharm el Sheikh, if you remember. We signed many, many agreements. The only agreement which was true is Siemens Agreement. Mm -hmm. One, Siemens Agreement. Even the agreement for the new capital from the, uh, the person from Emirat or an Emirat company, they withdraw. Now we are doing the capital by, uh, by our hands and possibly just Chinese may share us. The, you, you sign many agreements, but what changes from paper to true work yeah. is very few. And our Egyptian people, our rich Egyptian people, they didn't spend enough money for projects inside Egypt. Where does the money Either go? in Sinai or in any place. Okay, given what you're saying, if you're taking, given the fact of what you're saying, uh, those people who are having, um, enjoying a huge income every month and uh, uh, decent money every year with no capital uh, gain tax on uh, their huge incomes, where is their money coming? And why are we spoiling them and not uh, um, letting them get away uh, with the, with the, in, with the uh, capital gain tax, for example, the not affecting and not enforcing any taxes on them? And at the same time, they're not using the money in, in investing over here. The answer of this question is at the government. The government have to answer the question. Why they don't put high tax on them? Why they don't encourage them to work inside the country, part of their own money to be inside the country for investment or projects inside the country? All these answers, the government doesn't give it care. Mm. Doesn't give it care. This is the question. Mm. So, in conclusion, it depends upon how the government measures will support the Egypt of people to pass this hard economic era. Well, speaking about the government, the government have announced uh, earlier that they have rolled out social, uh, a number of social programs that they say will, is going to assist the middle class and the uh, poorer sector to be able to cope with the new economic reforms. Um, hopefully those programs are going to be able to uh, find some, uh, I mean, uh, co give comfort uh, to the people who are in great worry and panic about those latest economic reforms. Do you have any idea about if you can elaborate on those uh, uh, social programs uh, that are going to be affected by the government and if they are going to be uh, uh, really implemented practically on the ground uh, in a successful way? In my opinion, what the government say up till now mm. is not enough. Is not enough. Mm. The government say that they will support 
the very poor families. Okay. How many? How many these pure, uh, pure, uh, very poor families? How? What is the number of these very poor families? Have you count? How? How you count them? What about the uh, Egyptian employee? Are mm. they are not uh, poor? A huge sector in society. Uh, what about the, the uh, people on pension? People on pension. Oh. Nine million families. Mm. They are not poor. The government doesn't give anything really. The people need to feel things really. When I give you this in your hand, paper in your hand, this mm. means that you take this paper. But when I'm talking, 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 we have many years of talking. We need to feel, the people need to feel something really, really. We will do that tomorrow. Okay. Like President Sisi now, he gave an order for to free, I, I think, around 82, uh, 82 young uh, uh, people from prison today, mm. I think. Including Islam al bahiri yes, including This all. is a wonderful okay. step by this the This is uh, good because uh, now US you presidency. find that 82 persons became out of jail. Okay, what is needed from the government is that to let us feel about their own program. Let us feel this program. Mm. We are now having talking, but we didn't feel anything. Let us feel the program. Then we can say this program is good or is not good. But what is happening is talking, talking, talking. So you what? think the, the, the price the is increasing of... and the mm. government is talking. Mm. I will tell you something. I was reading on the uh, television that the uh, uh, sugar in the country is enough for uh, many months and the, the, the wheat also is enough for many months. This is very good. I want to tell them some, something. I can't find one kilo of sugar in Mahadi area, let us say. Okay, where is, where, where is the sugar which is enough? Mm. Okay, if everything going like this, so? Mm. Another uh, side effect uh, to the reform programs is that the, 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 some uh, elements of greed inside the Egyptian market, they take advantage and opportuni opportunities out of the situation and they affect a hike in prices. They hold the commodities and then they affect a hike in prices with no so surveillance whatsoever. This is what the, some what is the, the government people, supposed yes. to do? Uh, also Many this, people have been complaining good, about this. This is a good uh, uh, idea. The people now hiding things and they sell it with a very high prices. And when you ask them, they say that the dollar became very high. Mm. And also it is old commodities. Mm. Things before the, the, the prices of the dollar increased. I went, I, I, to, I went to buy one battery for my car. It was 300 pounds. When I went within two days, the man told me 600 pounds. I asked him why. This is not an old battery. He says the prices became like that. Okay. Mm. Because where is the government? There mm. is nothing. There is nothing. This is something very serious. This is what I, I mean, said. In those you. cases, you are an, a, former, a former member of parliament. There should be something official, and we're not going to invent the wheel. There should be something to be able to stand up to these practices, because this is a flagrant violation of the, of the law. What is supposed to be legislated immediately on the spot, like the, you mean the pardon decree that was made by uh, President Sisi yes. to be able to pardon the uh, prisoners of uh, opinion and uh, speech and all that, and that was an overwhelming step by the president. All what we see now is all the efforts, collaborated efforts, are only being uh, taken on the president's shoulder. And he's the only one who is trying to develop with the country by his own hand. It's a only one-man show, but it can be an only one-man one man show. He needs supporters. There is the government, there is the uh, parliament, uh, which is a very important element, and then there is the people of Egypt. The president can never be able to do all the things all at one time by, by only on, uh, in uh, one the, hand. If the president will do all the job, what is the value of the government and the parliament? Mm. <laughs> it's better. Where do you see the role uh, of the, the parliament question. in this hiking prices if and the this violation if, of the if prices the parliament law? are active, they have to ask the minister of trading, okay, and the prime minister, and they have to, 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 to have a, a, a immediate a strong stand against what is going in the market in Egypt. Okay, this they can push the prime minister to have some decision against those traders who are uh, uh, raising the prices 
without any base. Mm. The parliament member, I'm sorry to say that, they are not keen enough about the people. Okay, the ministry is very weak. They just working, uh, you know, uh, in the loan and in the things, uh, and the maybe they are putting some uh, plans for the future. But what about today? What about the people now? Usually what in about? developed countries, what happens in those cases? They have market, they have developing economy, they have buying and selling every day, and they have consumers' uh, uh, life, and uh, uh, they have trade all over their countries. So what happened to be able you, to regulate you, the you prices? You have to control the market. Do they form committees, surveying committees, surveillance? Uh, uh, we, we have many law many of committees. enforcement that could be effected on the spot with yes, fines. Yes, you have to increase the, uh, the punishment for those traders who are using. But how do uh, they reach everywhere? What is supposed to be? No, done? if you if you give the people uh, uh, telephone numbers of certain committee who is responsible on the market, they will find anyone. I mean, there is the uh, consumer protection agency, and do you think it's uh, doing enough? It is not active. Enough mm. is not active enough, and they didn't have a strong decisions. You have to need strong decisions. That means if one of the traders are paying more prices higher than usual, you have to close his shop and you have to mm. take him to the court to a rabbit, a rabbit court. By meaning that uh, it will not take years until uh, until years. Uh, it take punishment. It <laughs> punishment will be very rapid. So the people will feel that there is a effective justice. Effective justice, and also the traders will feel that there is a law, and there is there is a strong government. You need strong hands nowadays, mm. but not a weak hand. And that's how we defeated terrorism. Yes, we had a strong fist we, uh, by the brave again, our brave army and security yes, personnel, and yes. that's why we were the number one leading country in defeating terrorism. If we work against we set an corruption. Example. With the same right. uh, uh, power, uh, we fight terrorism, we will pass all this area right. by a good way. This was going to be my second question. The bureaucracy and corruption, two very uh, thorny uh, elements or issues that had not been uh, being controlled in this very moment. Political instability have been effectively like 90% uh, uh, reached to a good extent in almost... Uh, three years or less than four years by under the uh, rule of President Sisi. We have come a long way. Only for corruption and bureaucracy, we, can un we are unable to defeat it. No matter what we do, uh, we are unable to defeat it. And even the local investors, this is chasing local investors away. So if local investors are chasing uh, or fleeing away from corruption and bureaucracy, what would the foreign investment do? Because still the law is very weak. And if you take any person to the court, it will take a long, long time. So it doesn't give enough punishment to those uh, corrupted person. Mm. The corrupted person know that at the end, and then he will flit away. That's mm. why you need to change the law to be more stronger, to be more active against mm. corruption. Right, if you can excuse me now, we have with us Dr. Ibrahim Hegezi, a member of parliament over the phone. Good evening, Dr. Hegezi. Uh, good evening to you and uh, to uh, your dear guest. Uh, we were talking about the uh, efforts that are collected in the hands of President Sisi uh, uh, throughout the three years that we have come a long way, it is very sure, but we have seen almost nobody in the scene significant by President Sisi taking everything over his shoulder to be able to uh, uh, comfort the woes of the Egyptian men in the street and developing with economy, uh, defeating terrorism uh, with the Egyptian army and effecting a lot of uh, uh, decisions in the best interest of Egypt. Yes. But this can't be a one-man show. There must be other supporter roles in the background uh, with the president, like, for example, the government and the parliament and the Egyptian citizen. As a member of parliament, where do you see the parliament's role until this very moment? And we all know that the second round of parliamentary sessions have, been, uh, have started already. Yes, um, well, as a parliament member, I think we have two main roles to play 
uh, in the political arena. Number one is uh, setting uh, legislations that can protect uh, the poor and then uh, protect the human rights and democracy, uh, as well as uh, try to ensure that uh, the smooth transition in our current economic reforms. Mm. So this is number one, legislation. The second, which is as important as number one, is the issue of monitoring and control. So this, this is the second arm of the of uh, by constitution by 2014 constitution that parliament is, is uh, responsible to two things uh, uh, legislation setting as well as control monitoring plus of course uh, overlooking uh, the the fiscal budget and the monetary budget of the government right now i think this is extremely important with the loan of the imf you, uh, mm. there is a lot of economic reforms and there is a lot of positive as well as negative consequences Mm. So our role as as, uh, as parliamentary is to look at how the government is setting the plan to protect the needy and the poor uh, sectors of our uh, society from the harsh uh, negativeness of, uh, of the economic reform. Naturally, you expect to have positives, and naturally you expect the balance will be more toward the positive than the negative, such as the influx uh, of uh, foreign direct investment to Egypt, mm. and number two is uh, <clears throat> the tourism. You know, we expect, of course, that tourism will, uh, will be boosted by the devaluation of the Egyptian currency. And third, but not the least, is the issue of exports. So uh, w this is our role as, as parliament, is to monitor and make sure that the direction is, number one, to promote these three things as positive, and, also, and second is also to make sure that there is a set-in policies uh, to protect from the negativeness of uh, the economic reforms. Dr. Hegezi, how are we talking about attracting foreign investment? And until this very moment we're talking, we haven't, the parliament haven't been able to affect uh, working investment law until this very moment. Well, how are uh, you know, the, be, the investment law uh, for the parliament to look at it has to be presented first from uh, the government. Mm -hmm. And until now, the, the Minister of uh, Investment is working on um, a sort of... Um, an opinion feedback from all uh, stakeholders related to the new investment law. Uh, mm. So that's why we cannot do anything except waiting as a committee of the economic uh, committee in the parliament for the investment law to be uh, submitted. However, there are movements going on, especially if you hear nowadays that we are trying uh, to uh, offer uh, initial public offerings, IPOs, uh, to sell parts of uh, our public sector companies in the international stock market. Right, Dr. Hegeze, my final question to you, sir. Uh, opposite to the government, the parliament is the only entity that could come out with uh, very inspiring ways, let me put it that way, to be able to feed the worries of the people in the Egyptian street sure. after yep. the latest economic reforms. What do you have as priorities on the table for the second round of uh, sessions for the parliament? People uh, are very uh, anxious well, to hear. Uh, as as, as um, duties of, of the parliament right now is uh, to make sure that the very essential basic uh, products uh, price-wise should be controlled so that we don't see a huge inflation, mm. which is, of course, and the burden of uh, the Egyptian average person. Bear in mind that we have over 5 million uh, uh, individuals who work in the government. So their salaries has to be somehow adjusted for what is going on as depreciation of the currency. Uh, so this, uh, these are issues that are of extreme importance, and I think we have already submitted uh, requests and uh, you know uh, investigations with uh, his excellency, the prime minister, regarding what are the measures taken to uh, protect the public sector employees, and number two is to protect the uh, control of prices from acceleration from some mafia, as you saw, and we uh, you saw it in sugar, mm. and you saw it in. A lot of uh, medical uh, medical products and right. medicines. So that's extremely important, and I think we are taking charge of this. The question is how responsive the government is. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that I see a reactive approach rather than a proactive approach from the government. Mm -hmm. Meaning, whenever things uh, accelerate and whenever they came to be chaotic, they take action. What I want them to do is to be proactive, to forecast for the next round of the or the second tranche of the IMF which will come soon, but it will come after evaluation monitoring from the IMF responsible uh, office, uh, officers and officials. So that's, I think, what we are really working on right now, controlling prices, making mm. sure that the basic products are there, 
at affordable prices, and if not, then we have to look at the whole formula of substance because you mm-hmm. can see that we have so many people who are in the in the substance list, but they don't deserve it because mm-hmm. they are out of uh, you know the needing or the poor uh, grounds. Right, Dr. Brahim Hagezi, a member of Parliament. Thank you very much for your time, sir. And going back to you, Dr. Abdullah, Dr. Hagezi kindly. Uh, uh, touched on uh, what we were talking earlier to the phone call, which is controlling the hiking prices. But let me talk to you about uh, the uh, uh, steps that could be taken as, uh, in a series of steps, one by one, uh, and escalating steps to be able to control the uh, Egyptian market, to be able to ease the woods of the Egyptian street. As a former member of parliament, what steps could be taken? I mean, they have a long duty to effect and just on the spot, starting from this very moment, they what ha- are they supposed to do? They have to, to increase do? the punish penalty for those who are uh, abusing the market. This is number one. Mm. Number two, the uh, government will, uh, there will be more activity in the market. You can find uh, officers which can, you know, go to the shops and ask about the prices and the, in the markets and so on. Number three, you have to open channel with the citizen who have any problem to, to contact through this channel about the place where this abuse or increasing the prices above normal. Mm. This is number three. Number four, we have to talk really, not to give a false statistics. Mm, transparency. Yes, transparency. Uh, one, we only have one moment, but I have a very important question to you very briefly. Do you think that the tax reform policy that was uh, issued or legislated by the parliament is going to uh, succeed in increasing, increasing the resources of the uh, state? I still feel that the uh, taxes is not higher enough on the high income. Mm. My opinion, it has to be more higher than that. Let us look to the United States and, mm. and, and make Capital like the United gain State. tax. Yes. Mm. It, yeah, it's I, a rule. I will not suggest anything. We have a country, a capital, a, a country in, called the United States. Let us look for the taxes on the high income and do like the same. Mm. We are less than them. Mm. Okay. So I, I, I feel that they are still kind enough for the rich. Do you think they're taking a lenient position towards the... Yes, yes, uh, yes. This government, yes. It's like mm-hmm. that. It's like that. Uh, I'm not sure if we have uh, extra minutes uh, over... Uh, well, uh, Ashraf Makram, the director of uh, our program, is telling me that we're supposed to be packing and leaving because we're almost done. Uh, Dr. Salah Abdallah, former member of parliament and uh, the political analyst, would like to thank you, and economic analyst, would like to thank you very much thank for coming you, over as usual uh, with your valuable input. And this is where we end this edition of Windows and Current Affairs. Thank you very much for joining us and please do join us again next week. Until then, that's a goodbye.